So I uh, just want to start off by uh, talking about a couple things. Uh, you know, Justin Fields. You know, when Brian and I were at my house, uh, calling him. Um, obviously, a very uh, difficult decision uh, that we had to make, uh, but we thought it was uh, you know the right decision for everybody involved. And uh, you know, Justin and I have built a relationship over the last two years, and I just told, wish him the best and told him that I love him and. Uh, you know, we'll continue our friendship. You know, if everyone wants to call or, or visit, you know, we'll, we'll definitely do that. But uh, that was really the extent of the conversation. Uh, we thought it was also key that we called some uh, key leaders of our team uh, just to make sure we uh, communicate well, um, like we always do. And uh, we did that, and the guys understood. You know, they understand the profession. And uh, so that was a really good thing that we did. Um, you know, so and then moving on to free agency, we really feel that uh, the acquisitions that we've had so far have been outstanding. You know, obviously the main topic is we added all the skill, you know, a lot of skill to the offense. You know, so the weapons, you know, at running back with Swift and on the outside with Keenan and, you know, Everett at tight end, you know, paired with uh, DJ and, you know, and Cole are, are going to be uh, uh, tough to cover. And it's going to be uh, exciting to watch and how we put those guys together. Uh, offensive staff has been working, you know, diligently uh, to put their scheme in. Of course, you know, uh, with uh, Shane and and Simo and Thomas, and, you know, all those guys are a really uh, important uh, part of that. So, um, and I've been involved in that as well. So that's uh, important that we put those pieces in the right in the right spots. Um, you know, and then obviously, you know, Kevin uh, being back there at the uh, safety position is going to be big for our secondary. You know, so you know, the loss of Eddie. Uh, in the communication skills and, and, the, and the playmaking skills back there are going to be, uh, you know, really good with Kevin back there because he's obviously been a ball hawk guy. He's had 28 uh, interceptions in his career, and uh, we're excited about that acquisition, and uh, um, I'm excited about working with him. Um, you know, I spend time with those guys, the uh, each free agent when they come in and, and the draft guys that come in, but the free agents, I spent about 45 minutes to an hour just really talking to them about the foundation that we laid um, the first two years, um, how we operate in the building, um, you know, how we're respectful and how we work hard, you know, in the, in the, in the parameters of how we work hard. Uh, and, uh, you know, get to know them and their stories and their journey. You know, that's important for us to do that as we onboard um, all these new guys. You know, I think it might have been, what, 15 or 16 new guys that, that are coming in. And then obviously the full picks that we have, um, you know, you know, coming into the draft. So that's a, that's an exciting time for us. I'm most excited about uh, April 15. You know, so to me, this is a great time of year. You know, of course, you know when your evaluation of your scheme right after the year, and you know, obviously we had the, we hired a, you know, an offensive staff this year. That was that was unique for us, but uh, I thought we did a nice job there. But and then the evaluation of the talent, you know, in the draft, in free agency. I like that part, but uh, what I love is when the players come back. Um, and this is going to be a critical, you know, nine or ten weeks in the off season before we go to summer break. Um, so that's uh, it's going to be fun to be able to bring those guys together. And I said it last year: the most important part that we have, you know, besides scheme, right there is relationships. You know, so we're going to do a great job of, you know, intermixing the team to make sure that uh, that we get to know each other on a personal level and a deeper level just than football, um, because I think that's the glue that holds you together, the steel that. Is, is, is the middle of, of your football team is, uh, is the relationship piece of it and uh, the team changes every year and you got to do it every year uh, like John Wooden says you know you got to lace your uh, put your socks on and lace up your shoes every single year and, and we're excited about getting that started so uh, with that open up questions. There's obviously a lot of momentum building towards using the number one pick on a quarterback you guys have spent a lot of time with Caleb here in the last month and a half what have you learned about him personally in your time with him? Yeah, it was a really good visit um, out to USC in the pro day. You know, we went to dinner the night before uh, with several of the players um, um, on the USC uh, team that are, that are draft eligible, and it was uh, great to see him interact. Uh, you know, the great personality, um, great character. Um, you can see that easily during the um, during the dinner, and then the next day we spent some time. Uh, you know, doing the football uh, knowledge and all those things, but I, I started out uh, about an hour and 20 minutes, just him and I in the room together, and just really hearing his journey, you know, his journey, you know, from being a little guy, um, and, you know, and what I gleaned from that was how was, uh, how was his mother and father love him uh, very much and uh, very supportive, and, you know, you could see his character, um, his football character there, 
his football knowledge as I talked through that. And uh, yeah, it's, it was it was a really good visit. When he comes in to the building in Lake Forest, you know, what is, are the, the boxes you want to check or the things you want to learn there in the next phase? Yeah, we'll just continue on uh, some of the install that we installed there uh, in the pro day. We'll just keep uh, continuing on uh, on that journey. You know, teaching him more of the offense, and then you know having to give it back to us and, and see where he is that way. And he's been great that way. And uh, again, spend some more time uh, visiting with him. And uh, you know he'll get a chance to spend some more time with the offensive staff you know, that, that, that wasn't there at the pro day, and uh, it's going to be good. Ryan was telling us yesterday, <clears throat> excuse me, that when they go back, the front office can break up into teams and kind of war game out. Hey, do we need an edge rusher with the number nine pick? Do we need an offensive tackle? Do we need a wide receiver? Will you guys have any part of that discussion? And how do you view those three needs that you have? Uh, yeah. Where you sit. yeah, it's great. Sit it's you know obviously having the number nine pick is a really a good spot to be in. You know it's it's right there at the top, and and we're going to get a blue player there for sure. And you know what's uh, what we've done in free agency allows us to be flexible there uh, to be able to really take the best player that we feel fits for us in that spot. You know so uh, you know breaking up into pods or teams, we'll, we will certainly be part of that. And uh, that's an exciting time because we're you know we're going to look at hey who's the best tackle who's the best receiver who's the best rusher who's who's the best this you know that so it's going to be good uh, to be able to break into that and see guys' opinions you know because you know in order to have good communication um, it's got to be authentic and it's got to be true and you got to be able to speak your opinion. Coaching the draft player at number nine is kind of unique. You might have eight offensive guys go first. You may have the opportunity to take the top defensive player on the board. Uh, how do you evaluate taking guys and say, maybe he's my second or third best receiver, but this guy is my number one beat tackle, my number one edge? How do you kind of evaluate the place of work on that? Yeah, that's a great question, Herb. I would say that uh, we, we do that by doing the pods. So we get the pods ready to go, and then we put who's at top there um, at, at each of those positions. And then you go across lateral, okay, this way, and make it, and then you rank them that way. So, hey, this guy helps our team better. This guy helps, you know, this way. And it's all to me about always, you know, either affecting the quarterback or helping the quarterback. So uh, it comes down to those two questions. Now, when you have a high draft pick and the amount of resources you guys are already put into Caleb Williams, another top quarterback, is there a way to find out how that player is going to interact with maybe some of your key leaders on the team and getting their input on on that player before you draft him? Is there a way that you guys are going about doing that? Yeah. Um, yeah, you always talk about that, but it's important that, uh, you know, he gets to know uh, the people in the building, you know, for sure. Um, that, that's an important piece to it. And then, you know, if you can have some interaction there, that's always great, you know, to be able to do that. So I know that the players on our team uh, that we have are understand how we operate in the building and how we go about our business, and uh, that's always good to hear from those players. Well, when, when, you, when, you, when you called some of those players, that was just the field today, like what was... Yeah, those conversations, like especially with some of those players, like DJ Moore, who very close with Justin, like I think you see some of those conversations. Yeah, so uh, just being uh, upfront and honest, you know, it's just talking to them and say, hey, this is this is where it was. Uh, both sides thought that Pittsburgh was was the place for him to be successful, um, and we understand that. And. I just want to let you know ahead of time, you know, it's hard to do because when the news hits, it's, you know, yeah. they've already heard it. So I'm always, you know, a little bit behind on that. But, uh, um, yeah, just being upfront and honest with those guys. And they appreciated that. You know, every 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 guy every guy that I talked to said, Coach, I really appreciate you reaching out and, and, and you know, let me know ahead of time. And, uh, and, and so that was it. Is every conversation a bit different or is it? Maybe same duration. Any, any questions? Uh, no, not really different. No, nope. they were all just appreciative of, of the communication. Hey, you coached against Keenan several times. Uh, what do you appreciate about what he's going to bring for your offense? Yeah, just uh, his situational uh, excellence. You know, he's been great in situations. You know, when you got to make have a play, uh, and and he can make that play. You know, he's been great on third down, great in two minute, great in critical situations. Um, you know, he's. Uh, what a discipline and, uh, and uh, just a master at a route runner, um, you know, and he has the ability to, to be open and stay open, you know, with his body. So he understands how to do that. Matt, a big part of your responsibility, a big, a big part of your responsibility would be setting up sort of a developmental launching pad for the quarterback. With what you've done staff-wise and with your own knowledge, what gives you confidence about about taking on a, a new quarterback and, and kind of 
that elevator. Yeah, it's it's just really about just going through the process of it and uh, you know working through with the coaches um, and, and setting everything up for him. So you know when we're going to install things, uh, offense and defense, they have to be tied together to make sure that we're um, understanding how we're. Uh, moving uh, the quarterback and, and the offense in the right direction. And I think that's always important to do. Um, and that's not unique. Um, that's something that I've always done. Um, you know, so that, that's a big part of it. You know, and then really just the, the development side and the leadership side. You know, that's going to be a big uh, thing that, that Shane and I are, are working with the quarterback because obviously he's the apex of the offense. And that's going to be a big developmental piece as well. Hey, Matt, what was your big – I'm sorry. What, okay. oh, what was your big takeaway – from Caleb's workout and seeing him on the field. And yeah, it was great. It, it was great. Uh, the, the biggest takeaway is that uh, you can see the arm talent on the film and you can see it there in, in, you know, in person. And that was the biggest takeaway. Um, what I loved to see was that uh, the interaction with the other players. Um, you can see that and you know, we talked to every, every person that was on that team. You know, at the Senior Bowl, we interviewed them. We interviewed them at the, uh, at the Pro Day. We talked to those guys at the dinner. And you can certainly see that those players uh, love uh, love him and respect him and uh, and what he's brought to that program. Yeah, just uh, just the overall weapons, you know. So if you have another weapon like that, you got uh, DJ, you know, and then Keenan, you know. So you know, you know, one A and a one A type receiver, you know, it's obviously very beneficial to any quarterback. Um, and then you pair that with a couple really good uh, two tight ends. And, and running back, I think that's the, that's the key piece um, to uh, helping those guys execute in a better way. Matt, for Keenan to show up at Canada, you know that, what did that tell you both about his buy into the team and the excitement of building around the guys? Yeah, I saw Keenan uh, at the pro day and I turned around and I went and visited with him. And uh, I said, uh, how you doing? And he said, I'm, I was trying to go incognito. I said, you're in, in beer's gear. You're in beer's gear and you got your Keenan Allen beard sticking out. I said, I don't, I don't know if you're you're pulling that off right now, but uh, no, it was great to great to see him, and uh, it was uh, great to visit with him a little bit more too, you know, and talk to him about uh, just about the whole process, his process, and and uh, it, it was it was really good to see him. I, I thought it was really cool that he showed up. Yeah, the fact that he did show up, what does that tell you about his mindset and kind of what he was looking to see? Yeah, I, I, uh, Keenan is uh, always about uh, the next play, you know, so he is he moves on quick. You know, so as soon as the trade happened, boom, he was there, uh, ready to go. He it was it brought his whole family, you know, when he signed and stuff. And, and it was really cool to see those guys, how supportive they are. And he's always on to the next play. For a vet like that to show up to Caleb's pro day, what does that tell you about the excitement that's around Caleb? Yeah, it's it's exciting for uh, for him to, to be able to support that. You know, if we go in that direction, and uh, you know, obviously he lives right there, so it was a, it was easy for him to make that trip. You know, so uh, it, was, it was cool to see. With, with the additions you guys have made uh, on the interior of the offensive line mm -hmm. and free agency, Ryan's talked a lot about the infrastructure part around a young quarterback. How important having someone like Ryan Bates like in that relationship with bringing along a rookie and having that relationship get be like a focal point early on for you? Uh, very important for a young quarterback to have that center, um, you know, you know, experience, you know, be able to call and make adjustments, you know, to the protections uh, to help and assist that way. Um, you know, so we, we thought it was critical to get that that piece and, and Ryan Ryan fits that bill and, and uh, we're excited to have him. You know, he's been a pro a long time and he's moved along, you know, the line inside there, so at guard and center, so it's good to have that position flex as well. But yeah, that's a that's a critical piece for sure. I'm sorry. Why is Kevin Byers such a good fit here? Uh, smart. Um, experienced, uh, very good communicator, and ball hawk. And to me, those things are what you're looking for. Um, he's got great range. He still has really good speed. And um, you know, I, I know those guys are getting together. You know, out there, out in California, um, as we speak, and uh, the whole secondary is. And I think uh, Brisker is putting that on. He's organized that whole thing by himself. And. And it's exciting to get that relationship going, and those guys are working towards that. Matt, wait, Matt, when you look at your edge rushers, do you need more there? And and when you look at veterans, is that something that could happen after the draft? Kind of when guys get a sense of whatever team, you know, the ship. Yeah, absolutely, in. absolutely, it can happen uh, during or after, and it's important that we get that piece. Um, you know, because you have to have the the one-two punch. Yeah. 
you know, and it can be inside as well. You know, you look at uh, who affects the quarterback the most. Well, I, w I would ar also argue that the inside piece is also something that we should be looking at, and it's important that we do that. You know, it's a um, direct line to the quarterback. Uh, when they max protect, it's a soft spot in the protection. Um, you know, so we're looking at all all pass rushers. It, it could be inside, outside, all along the line. So um, we're having an open mind um, in that regard. With Justin, Justin gone, Justin gone, I guess in that regard. Justin Jones, like, how ready do you think Javon Dexter maybe is for that next step, especially as you start looking at you know draft options? I always say that the, the biggest jump uh, for players is is typically the second half of the rookie season or into their into their second year, and. Uh, because it's it's not, it's not new anymore. They understand the rhythm of the of the training camp and the off season training camp into the season, and they understand that they've had a, a chance to really go through the process of what works best for them. And so we'll see a big jump with him and Pickens. And uh, we're excited about both those guys. There's a lot of talk this week about the, the hip drop tackle and the mm -hmm. changes being made there. As a yep. defensive coach, somebody obviously that understands what the players will have to adjust to. What is your reaction to the change, and, and what is going to be the challenge of teaching it in a way that applies quickly. Yeah, uh, you know, the, in 1995, we did a study at the, uh, when I was at the University of Toledo, what makes a good tackle? And, you know, Coach Pinkle uh, talked to us, hey, how do we take guys and, and knock them sideways or backwards so they don't fall forward? And we did a study, we pulled off all the tape we could in the NFL, college game, high school tape, all that. And, and what we found out, we found out with these parameters, and we came up with a thing called the hamstring tackle. And I've been using that for uh, since '95, and so to me, it's it's pretty easy. I don't have to really change or adjust. Um, we've never taught that type of tackle. Uh, we hit with the top of our pads. Now I had to adjust a little bit when we took the head out of the game. You know, putting the head in front, you know, on the side, and all those things. But it's been the same um, that we've done since '95, and uh, I think it's a really good rule. You know, because I don't want to lose uh, offensive players uh, because of that technique. And I think it's a, it's a really good way to, you know, put it on the books to make sure um, that we get that tackle out of the game. DeAndre Swift, do you think it's going to be difficult to I don't think so. Um, I think when I mean, you see it, you know it. You, you, you know, it's like, oh, that, that was that was it. You know, because it's a it's the grab and the swivel and then the weight release of the legs to drop on the lower extremities, and uh, I think you can clearly see it. And um, and I think the league's going to do a good job of officiating it um, and making sure they're not going overboard with it, too. What are your thoughts on the health in terms of start training camp a week early? How much of that do you think is an advantage? And will you change anything about the schedule, rest guys more often? Yeah, uh, I'm going to change the schedule and adjust a little bit. Um, I think it's uh, going into the season, it's important that you give the veterans um, the time that they need to get ready. You know, so I'm going to have mandatory minicamp the first week in June. You know, I think it's uh, uh, four, five, and six, I believe, will be mandatory minicamp, and then I'll have the, the rookie stay, and we'll do those last OTAs in that, last, that second week. Um, so I think it's uh, June 10, 11, 12 um, during that time. But uh, yeah, you got to bring them back early. We got those bonus four days. Um, you know, I think the, those guys are coming back in uh, the 17th of the uh, rookies and then the 19th. You know, it's going to be in July of the veterans. First practice will be the 20th. But, uh, you know, it's important that we do the um, the first four days, you know, so it's a ramp-up period. And uh, I'm going to meet, you know, I haven't decided exactly what we're doing yet, but I think it's a great time for us to be able to get some conditioning in there, obviously football in there, and use those, time, use those times to really do a performance-based thing so we can see where guys are. Uh, leading into training camp, so I'm excited about that time. DeAndre Swift the, was the first. DeAndre Swift was the first big name free agent after the negotiating period yeah. opened. Why was he, and why was upgrading the running back room so important as like the first focal point for this team free agency? Yeah, we just felt that uh, you know we wanted a home run hitter there, and I, th I think uh, DeAndre brings that, uh, and we wanted a weapon back. You know, a, a guy that could be a weapon out of the backfield. I think he had 49 catches last year, 50 uh, close to that, um, and he brings that. You know, he's got tremendous speed. Um, you can feel that when he's when he's running the football, but you can definitely feel that when he's when he's a pass catcher. Um, so I know that in situational football, um, it's it's very difficult to be able to have um, you know the two guys outside covered, a, you know tight end or two tight ends covered, and then you got another situation that you have with a weapon back inside. 
Um, so that was critical for us to be able to acquire him. With as dynamic as Justin was for this team with his legs, how do you envision the plan for you know, what this team and the run game is going to look like with him not in the picture? You know, so we've been, uh, you know, really uh, effective in the run game for us, and I think it'll be, it'll be, uh, it's going to adjust based on our skill set at quarterback, and um, you know, whoever we take there, it'll be adjusted based on what he can do, because um, I believe uh, DeAndre, you know, and Khalil, you know, and Roshan, all those guys can run all the runs. You know, they can run our inside runs, our gap schemes, outside inside zone. So. Um, it, it'll it'll be uh, similar, but a little bit different based on where the quarterback is. And with Thomas, with Thomas Brown, what uh, have you kind of? How was his experience last year with Bryce Young? Mm -hmm. How's that going to help you? And can you kind of define a little bit what his role is going to be with, with the offense? Yeah, so Thomas has been outstanding, and we're fortunate to have him. You know, uh, he had several uh, offensive coordinator interviews, uh, head coaching interviews, so he's been a. Uh, you know, kind of a hot guy the last couple of years, and uh, we're fortunate to have him. And his experience with Bryce is something that something that we leaned on. You know, in terms of taking, you know, the first, uh, you know, a quarterback at the first pick and all that. So it's uh, it's important that uh, we you know, got the information from him of what his process was with Bryce. You know, and what we can learn and adjust. You know, from that process. So it's been great. You know, and. I've had uh, you know Shane and obviously Simo you know and Thomas you know in my office a few times talking about you know their relationship you know and how they operate together how they communicate to put this offense together um, with the uh, with the rest of the offensive staff and it's important that those guys are always working lockstep together you know in the protection in the pass game in the run game um, to make sure offense is uh, effective. Do you, Matt, believe notice um, a total style change? Clothing, hair, can you explain like the influence of that? Because, sorry, that's a weird question, but I just need to know, you know, yeah. someone influenced this, what, what is the reasoning behind it? Yeah, I have uh, three uh, major uh, women in my life. It's uh, my wife, Kelly, was the major influence, and then my daughter, Grace, and then Giada. So I just, I just do what they tell me, you know, <laughs> and then... Uh, and then uh, uh, Funk the barber, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. In downtown, he has uh, a barber shop, but he also comes in and you know he assisted obviously in, in uh, pulling that off. And he did a, he did a good job. So um, she's been wanting me to do the beard for a long time. I've always said no, and she said, hey, let's just try it this off season. And I said okay. After a week, I said it's it really itches. I'm shaving it. She goes, please don't. And then uh, kept it. And then it didn't itch anymore. So I was okay with it. So. Do you feel refreshed after? I mean, you just went through hell for the last two years to get this thing where it needs to be going into year three. I mean, the style change is probably a, a byproduct of that. But do you feel with where the team's going and just kind of what you've been through, the process of that, are you refreshed now? Yeah, I would. I would say that when you look at. Uh, when we took the job and you know Ryan and I uh, took the job in 22 you know so we knew the process was going to be difficult you know we didn't go into it blind like oh this is going to be easy you know we knew exactly where the lay of the land was um, you know everybody through the interview process with you know Bill Polian and George and everybody that was in there laid out the process of what it was going to be you know in terms of we have to build this thing in stacks you know you know so the first year was difficult you know the start of last year was um, but then you could see that we laid good foundation and then started to go on the rise. So um, we knew it's going to be a process of that. And now we're, now we're in our year three and uh, we're starting to add the talent because we got the cap right. Ryan and his crew have done an outstanding job and uh, we're in a good spot. What are the people in Pittsburgh getting in Justin Fields that might not show up on Sundays? Uh, a leader. Uh, he's a leader. Um, um, he's got great personality and you're going to get a guy that's a dynamic worker. Um, he's going to work um, from, you know, when he, the first, he's, he's going to be the first guy in, the last guy to leave. So uh, an outstanding person and a great worker. Can he benefit from having a Russell Wilson there to, to be able to? I would say uh, Justin uses anything he can to learn and, and get better. So, yeah, he can learn from uh, from the coaches, from anybody. He's going he's to do that. Matt, as an extension of Courtney's question, the, the outside fear would be that there will be this winner else pressure on you guys as a coaching staff while taking on a young quarterback. It's happened in Chicago multiple times where a rookie quarterback has to reboot after year one. How do you kind of allay the concerns of, of the fact that that won't be an issue for you? Yeah, it's just about going through uh, the process of putting your offense in, your defense in, you know, and really just starting at square one, you know, and, and paying attention to detail. 
Um, you know, I, I've had several meetings with the coaches because I have a, a you know, half of the coaching staff is new and they have to understand how, how that process is and how, how we go about that process and what we want to see on the practice field um, in terms of the effort and the execution. And uh, that's been fun to be able to do that. Um, so yeah, it's just going through step by step and paying attention to detail. With your relationship with Ryan, do you feel a dynamic from above of that this is a year where like you really need to prove something to retain his trust? Um, I don't. I don't. You know, him and I are uh, you know like brothers. We have been for several years now, uh, even before we got the job. So we're uh, uh, continuing to build that relationship. And uh, you know we're going to be lockstep in everything we do in terms of player acquisition. You know how we operate. You know, um, you know in terms of that process and, and on the field process too. Do you, th do you think C.J. Stroud in Houston kind of reset maybe expectations for rookie quarterbacks that you can go to the playoffs with them? You can, you know, you can have success immediately. I mean, he, he seemed to have it figured out in a month. Um, and, and how might that affect you know your, your timeline with your quarterback? Yeah, CJ did a wonderful job. The offensive staff and uh, you know D'Amico did a wonderful job last year with those guys. And again, um, you know our situation is our situation. So everything's unique. Every building's unique in the NFL. Um, every situation is unique. And uh, we're excited about working with our situation and, and making it the best we can. Now, what do you think of the what do you think of the proposed kickoff rule? Yeah, I I, th I think it needed to be. Uh, you know, we'll see uh, where it goes today. We're taking a vote today and. Uh, you know, we'll see where they go with it. But I, I do know that uh, we had to do something to bring that play back. And, you know, the proposal that they have, I think, is uh, it's unique. Um, it does take the speeds out and the collisions out. And uh, it's going to be really uh, interesting to see how it gets schemed up. You know, I'm excited about that because I'm going to have several meetings with uh, with Hightower about it because I have my, my thoughts and as I look at that alignment, I, I think there's a lot of things that can happen there, and uh, I'm excited about looking at uh, all those uh, options. What are the hesitations for those that are, I guess, not on board yet with, with the vote today to pass the new kickoff? What are the hesitations in the conversation? Um, yeah, it's just about, you know, it's the unknown. You know, some people, you know, are, are just uncomfortable with the unknown, and, you know, they don't know how the play's going to come out. You know, is, is it going to be... The ball's going to be starting at the 50-yard line every time because of this play. Um, you know, is there, is, is, the, is there going to be injury to the like the, the kicker? You know, so I think we, you know the one of the parts of the rule is good because you know he can't cross the 50, the kicker can't cross the 50 until the ball is caught. I think that's a good that's a good rule that's, that's in that in that adjustment. You know, so yeah, there's just concerns of the unknown. What you went a lot of the year last year without without a name. Yeah, just having uh, Eric in there is going to be a tremendous help, you know, uh, for us, uh, Herb, because it's like, you know, I have somebody uh, in there that can be helping me set up the entire game plan, um, you know, during the week in terms of the the walkthroughs in terms of the practices, in terms of all those things, and then also be another voice in there as we game plan. Um, you know, so uh, again, we're, we're all gonna be in there uh, during the game plan process, and uh, he's gonna help me uh, set up the practices and the training camp and, and all those organizations. Yeah, you were trying to do like 50-50 offense, defense, you kind of set the, the, the tone and the culture of the, of the team. This year coming, presumably, with the rookie quarterback, do you kind of go back to that, or do you stick kind of what you did last year, kind of focus on defense and, you know, oversee offense. Yeah, I would say more, more of what we did last year. Um, you know, I'm always in the uh, the breakfast club with the quarterbacks, uh, so I get the, uh, you know, the, uh, the the time with those guys there. And I'll, I'll spend some time with, you know, certain walkthroughs with them as well. Uh, but I'll be in all the unit meetings with the defense and, and, and with the defense, you know, the majority of the time as well. So. As you revised your office coaching staff in January and went around and talked to different people, what drew you most to Shane and what, what was the connection there that, that really impressed you? Yeah, it was, it was a great process. Um, you know, I think, you know, it was, yeah, the number of guys that we interviewed and they did an awesome job. But you know, Shane, you know, really stood out because of his ability to communicate and his ability to make things clear and concise you know, in his presentation and the way he did it. And uh, he was uh, clearly the guy that we thought was the best um, for us. Um, I think the other thing that helped uh, us decide on Shane was his experience. You know, he was an experienced play caller 
and uh, he did uh, with multiple quarterbacks. Uh, and, and to me, that was uh, that was a separator for me. Yeah.